So, um, sort of my story and the story of, of Compass is, uh, is we're going to talk about healthcare costs, which seem uh, incredibly uh, Byzantine and complicated. Uh, and so, like I, like I said, after lunch, you all are doing a fantastic job of staying awake. So at, uh, at Compass, we provide tools and support for healthcare consumers. We're part of an employer's employee benefits package where we actually work with the employees to find them high quality uh, healthcare that's also uh, cost effective as well. And we do that through a combination of technology uh, and with people. And it's really somewhat of a, of a Texas uh, entrepreneurial uh, story as well. We, this is a bootstrapped company that now has 300 people. Uh, we've hired uh, 100 uh, FTEs just this year, so we're 100 out of those 86,000 uh, jobs that you talked about. Um, and our office is just right at Oakland and Cedar Springs. We support um, 2,000 employers across the country, so big names like T-Mobile. They've got an office up in Frisco, but a lot of uh, bastions of North Texas uh, uh, businesses like Southwest Airlines, Brinker International, which is Chili's and Maggiano's, Atmos Energy, which is the largest um, uh, publicly traded natural gas company, uh, TXU and Encore, uh, and the list kind of goes on and on. So just a wonderful uh, clients. It's about 2 million people that we support nationally. Okay, so just to give you an idea of, um, of healthcare stats as a snapshot, so this is according to the Kaiser Family Foundation. So family healthcare coverage costs just, just shy of $17,000 a year. Of that 17,000, uh, workers pay about 4,800 of that, and employers pay 1,200. Uh, for employers, it typically is their third largest uh, cost item after payroll and, uh, and other uh, inputs. Uh, it increased by 3% in 2014, and it's projected to increase 5% per year for the next 10 years. So if you do the math on that, that means in 10 years, healthcare costs are going to be 63% higher, uh, which would put family coverage at $27,000 a family, of which the worker would pay just shy of $8,000, and you, the employers in the room, are gonna be paying over $19,000 uh, for that. And of course, the 800-pound the, um, the uh, gorilla is, uh, is health reform that has happened. And the important thing to understand about health reform is that when it was passed, it was said that it would not add a dime to the federal deficit. Now, how is that possible? That's possible because the actual cost for subsidies and increased health insurance en enrollment through the Affordable Care Act was achieved by decreasing Medicare reimbursement in the future. Right? So the government is going to pay doctors and hospitals less in the future. So Medicare payments are going to go down. And what happens is, is that all doctors and hospitals then use employers and privately insured patients to cross-subsidize their decreased Medicare payments. So that means that as doctors and hospitals get paid less by Medicare, they're going to in turn charge employers more. So that's part of the reason why it's projected to increase by more than uh, about 5% per year for the next 10 years. So. So that gets us to the point about, um, about health uh, and healthcare spending. So healthcare spending and health are two very different things. So this is according to the Bipartisan Policy Center that said that what makes us healthy is actually 50% behavior, 20% environment, 20% genetics, and only 10% access to care. But then what do we actually spend money on as it relates to our health? Well, it's the exact opposite. We spend 88% on medical services uh, and only 4% on, uh, on healthy behavior and 8% on other. That's like trying to get an education and spending a whole bunch of money on fancy backpacks and computers and lots of schools, but then not doing your homework, right? So it's a combination. I mean, yes, you need to have you know, fancy backpacks, but you got to do your homework as well, okay? So it's important to separate out health from healthcare spending, okay? And within that healthcare spending, this is a, a famous statistic, it's, uh, it's, it's estimated that 30% of all healthcare spending is waste. And again, this is from the Bipartisan Policy Center uh, and the Institute of Medicine as well. And so that 30% uh, of waste of, of the almost $3 trillion a year adds up to $765 billion annually. And then the Institute of Medicine broke it out into, the, into these separate buckets. And so certain buckets, employers cannot necessarily impact, right? Employers can't do much about fraud. They can't necessarily do too much about excessive administrative costs at doctors, hospitals, or insurance companies themselves. But they can do something about unnecessary services, inefficiently delivered services, prices that are too high, and missed prevention opportunities. So essentially four out of these six buckets of U.S. healthcare waste actually can be impacted by employers and employees. Okay, so I'm going to tell you where healthcare costs come from, and it's a very simple equation, okay? Healthcare costs equal the price per unit times the number of units. 
So in other words, you would add up, what's the price of an MRI, and then you multiply that by the number of MRIs. What's the price of an office visit times the number of office visits? And you would add that all up, and you would get an individual employer's health care expense, or you would get a state's health care expense, or you would get the country's health care expense, right? So whenever you think about health care costs, it's price of units times the number of units. Well, the Journal of the American Medical Association did a very interesting study back in 2013. They said, okay, well, what's driving it? And they found that the top four drivers of rising U.S. health care costs were the price of hospital services, the price of professional services, which is another way of saying doctor services, physical therapy services, other allied health professional services, the price of drugs, and administrative costs, okay? So notice what's not on this list. Increased utilization or the number of units is not the reason for increased health care costs. Health care costs are rising because health care prices are rising. Okay, that's an important dynamic to understand for employers. The price of uh, health care costs are rising because the price of health care is rising. All right, so then that begs the question, where do these health care prices come from? Okay, so I am now going to spend the next five minutes making every single one of you in this room an, an expert in where health care prices come from, okay? So you will know more than like 99.9% .9 of the population when it comes to this, okay? So here's the, if you don't remember anything else from what I say today, remember this. The price of healthcare services is very different depending on where you receive care locally, even within network. Okay, what does that mean? That means like at one in-network facility, an MRI could cost $1,240. At another in-network facility in the same town, it could cost $527. For the price of a GI endoscopy, so that's like for a colonoscopy or an upper endoscopy, at one in-network facility would cost $28.50. At another in-network facility would cost $5.27. Oh, by the way, if you like your Dr. Anderson, your gastroenterologist, and you don't want to change from your Dr. Anderson, your gastroenterologist, oh, by the way, he performs procedures here on Monday and procedures here on Tuesday. So you don't even necessarily have to change doctors, okay? <laughs> so, uh, and then this is for a total knee replacement. In-network facility one, it would cost $57,000 for a total knee replacement. At in-network facility number two, it would cost $29,000, a $28,000 difference. Both of these facilities are in the DFW area, and they're both on the same street. Okay, so you might have heard of like medical tourism where you can like go to India or Costa Rica to get surgery. Well, you can kind of have domestic medical tourism where you just drive down the street, <laughs> right? Okay, so now I'm gonna take you to the negotiating table between healthcare providers and insurance carriers. So that determines where these prices come from. Okay, so I'm really gonna be pulling back the curtain here. Okay, so this is what literally happens at the negotiating table. So hospital A says, look, I want really good reimbursement for my imaging, for my MRIs and my CT scans. I want $1,240 for every scan. Insurance company says, okay, we'll do that, but you gotta give us something somewhere else in the contract. And they say, okay, well, we'll take much lower re uh, reimbursement on our orthopedic surgery, like total knee replacements. We'll do a knee replacement for 29 grand. Say, so, oh, that's pretty good. Okay, insurance company goes across town to hospital B and they have the exact opposite conversation. Hospital B says, well look, I'll do a CT scan for 527. Insurance network says, oh, that's great, that's a good deal. But then the hospital comes back and says, but I want $57,000 for every single knee replacement that I do, okay? So now, you, you repeat that dynamic of horse trading for labor and delivery, endoscopy, implantables like pacemakers and stents, outpatient surgery, MRIs, med surge stay rates for just staying over the night in the hospital for like a pneumonia. And what you have is in aggregate, the discount at hospital A is 50%, and in aggregate, the discount at hospital B is 50%. And so, but it's filled with like 80%, 20% over here, and then a different 80%, 20% over here. So people say to me, Dr. Bricker, which is the most cost-effective hospital in town? And I say, well, it depends, right? It depends upon what you're having done. So you can't look at discounts in the aggregate. You have to look at it for the specific medical service that your employees are having, okay? So now we all have to get on the same page in terms of terminology, so we'll do that briefly, okay? The price equation is bill charges are then run through that contract that we just talked about, and that's what gives you the final price. So bill charges for a doctor or a hospital comes from something called the charge master, and that's a list of all the different tests of procedures that are done at that particular facility. So like aspirin, $3, bag of IV saline, $110, 30 minutes of OR time, $3,000. And all of those different charges, they roll up to codes, uh, some of which are called a CPT code, which is a procedure code. So every single code that's done in healthcare has, has a five-digit CPT code assigned to it. Okay, those charges are then run through the contract or the reimbursement methodology 
or what's referred to as the discount, right, that the, that the network has negotiated with the hospital. And then after you run that through the discount or the reimbursement methodology or the contract, then you get the final allowed amount or the contracted rate. That's the real price. So sometimes you'll hear a, uh, news stories or you'll read a story in the news about prices, and they'll be talking about this, okay? And those are not the real prices. The real prices, which, what you as an employer want to know about, is this, the allowed amount or the contract rate after it's been run through the contract, okay? So then, what are those contract terms? Well, there's various ones. There's case rates, percent of charge, stop loss, and carve outs. So I talked to the head of benefits at a Fortune 20 technology company, and she said to me, okay, well, that's all very interesting, Dr. Bricker, but can you tell me which hospitals use case rates and which ones use percent of charge? The answer is it doesn't work that way. Essentially, all healthcare providers use a combination of these for their various services. So now I'm going to make you a very brief expert in these, because this is important. This is where the actual prices come from. So for a case rate, the price is negotiated for a specific test or procedure independent of billed charges, oftentimes used for CTs or MRIs, right? So let's say you're getting an MRI. Hospital A will bill $3,000 for that MRI, but they have a contracted case rate for two grand, so that case rate equals the final price of two grand. Hospital B charges $1,500 for an MRI, but their contracted case rate is for a flat $1,000, so the final price is equal to the case rate, 1000 bucks. Pretty simple, right? So then the next question is, at which hospital did you save more money, A or B? Well, you save more money at A, right? You save $1,000 here, but you only save $500 here, right? So you should feel real good about that, right? No. So you're going broke saving money, right? So you, that is, so you don't want to, you don't want to look at, you don't want to look at the quote unquote discount. You want to look at the actual contracted rate of the price, okay? Next one, percent of charge. So this is what people typically think about when they think about percent discounts. So here the price is determined based on a percentage of the billed charges that is negotiated. This is oftentimes used for things like outpatient surgery. So let's say like arthroscopic knee surgery. You hurt yourself water skiing on Lake Louisville or something, okay? So Hospital A will bill $1,500 for that arthroscopic knee surgery. They've negotiated a 75% reimbursement rate. So that's like the equivalent of a 25% discount. So the final price is just 1,500 times 0.75 gets you to 11.25, right? Pretty simple. Hospital B bills $6,000 for an arthroscopic knee surgery, their contract isn't as good. They have to give up 50%. They got to do a 50% discount, right? So 0.5 times 6,000 gets you $3,000, okay? So again, I ask you, at which hospital did you save more money? Well, you got a better discount at Hospital B, so you should send all your employees to Hospital B, right? No, right? So, which, so that's where it's important not only to look at the contract di uh, discounted rate, but it's important to look at the billed charges as well. Okay, carve-outs. Bill charges have a specific line item for a device or medication that has a separate negotiated price. So this is used for things like a pacemaker. So at hospital A, they'll bill $10,000 for the nurses, the lights, the actual cardiac cath lab, and then they'll have a fixed case rate of $5,000 for that, but then they'll have a line item for the actual pacemaker itself that says, you're gonna pay us $10,000 for the pacemaker. So you have to add the 5,000 to the 10,000, and you end up getting a total price of 15,000. At Hospital B, they charge 12000 for the nurses, the lights, the cath lab, and the pacemaker all in, and they've negotiated a case rate there for 7500 So again, you would say, okay, well, if you just looked at the case rate, then Hospital A is better, but you have to specifically look at the carve-out for the pacemaker as well when evaluating the price. Okay? Finally, last but not least, stop-loss clause. A price is set at a case rate up to a certain amount of bill charges above which the price changes or flips from a case rate to a percent of charge. This is oftentimes used uh, for more complex surgeries that can still be outpatient. Okay, so hospital A, let's say for an outpatient prostate surgery, charges uh, $20,000 and they've got a fixed case rate of $10,000, so the price is 10 grand, pretty simple, right? Hospital B also has a fixed case rate of 10 grand up to build charges of 40,000, but as soon as it hits 40,000 and one dollar of build charges, the bill flips from a $10,000 case rate to 75% of billed charges. And so therefore, when the bill hits $40,001, you take 40,000 times 0.75, that bill just became a $30,000 bill, right? And guess what? They set up their charges so that they blow through that $40,000 every time, okay? <laughs> so the point is, billed charges matter. This is where, it was like, how in the world can all, you see these, these stories in the, in the Dallas Morning News and the New York Times, where do all these incredibly high prices come from? How is that possible? Well, what happens is the healthcare provider looks at their overall costs, 
and then they look at their existing co uh, contract terms, and then they essentially back into, or they reverse engineer, okay, what do my build charges need to be so that when I run them back this way, what I need to get paid, okay? So that's where the $3 aspirin and the $3,000 th $3, of OR time come from, right? The aspirin doesn't really cost $3. They just set it up that way so that when they run it through their contracts, it maximizes their reimbursement. Okay, so how, so how does that specifically relate to employers and employees that are in the room? So this is where when Compass gives the price transparency uh, and then uh, steers people to primary care and preventive services through technology and through our health pros, this is for an 11,000 uh, employee uh, energy company here in North Texas. We engage with 62% of their employees. Look at it there at their preventative exams rate. Went from 17% to 62%. Breast cancer screening from 20 to 76. Cervical cancer screening from 20 to 70. Uh, colonoscopy screening from 11 to 60. As a result of all this preventative care and giving people prices in advance, guess what happened to their healthcare trend? It was flat. Whereas if it had gone up the typical uh, 5% to 8%, it would be up uh, 990. To, to them, translated into $8 million of savings. And the most important thing that this company said to us was, Look at our life insurance claims. They had eight people die in 2011, 10 in 2012. They had 18 employees die in 2013. And then in 2014, they only had four folks. Because people were having their blood, high blood pressure and their diabetes identified early by these preventive care visits as opposed to the first time they ever realized they had those chronic diseases is when they dropped dead from a heart attack. And that literally ha was happening in 2013, okay? So what's the point? In summary, uh, Healthcare cost inflation is due to price increases, not increased utilization. Prices high, are highly variable. Prices are based on provider and insurance contracting, not actual costs. And employer healthcare spend can be brought under control. And with that, I thank you very much.